In this video we're going to go ahead and download the Windows 10 ADK files, then we'll import them to the boot disk creator. We'll also be importing the LinPE files that we downloaded originally from File Connect. To download the Microsoft uh, files we'll go and Google Windows 10 ADK and the generally the top link is the proper one. As of the recording of this video, the WinPE version 1809 was not yet supported. So we go down here to other ADK downloads and locate the 1803. A ADK setup will be available and we will execute. The ADK setup is just a downloader. It's not the full piece. We have to go and select the parts that we want to be gathering. The default location is uh, desirable as Ghost will be looking in this location by default. I don't send the usage back, but you certainly can. We do have to accept the agreements. The only portion that we need are the third and uh, second and third. WinPE is actually the only portion that we actually need, but deployment tools are required. If we uncheck that, it goes away. So deployment tools and Windows pre-installation environment. We'll do an install, and this can take quite some time depending on how busy the, the Microsoft servers are. So that took about 15 minutes to download, not too bad all in all. Once installed, we can go ahead and close out of the ADK tool, and we'll go ahead and launch Ghost Solution Suite console. And from here we can go to tools to get up, bring up the, the tools to bring up the boot disk creator. And I'm going to go ahead and not show this again. And I'm not ready to create a configuration. I'm going to go to the boot disk creator interface, tools, and oops, install pre-boot up. So here are all the different versions of uh, PE and LinPE that are supported. So we can quickly go ahead and grab the GPL file. That is the Linux one. Uh, actually, my mistake, this is actually AX86, if I recall correctly. Quick install. All right, we can finish there. And again, we can go to Tools and Install. And now we can select our next uh, OSs. And next, I would recommend getting both the x86 and the x64. There are times when both of them need to be present, even if you're only intending to use the 64. Go ahead and finish on that, and we have to do it again. Tools, install preboot. We're going to grab the 64. Because we installed it in the default location, we can just hit next here. A couple of things that will cause hangups here on importing if we are not, if UAC is turned back on and we don't have run as admin as an option, you'll get some potential issues with importing or building PE environments. Also, GPOs that prevent the execution of software in the temp folder, I believe, will be problematic, as well as uh, antivirus, potentially. There was a large issue with McAfee a while back where even in the McAfee, uh, McAfee KB stated that there was problems with it and installing of the ADK files. So not just importing it here, but the actual installation that we did previously would be blocked. And so there are opportunities for failure because of failed install of the ADK file. We won't validate every single file. We'll import the ones that are there, and if they're either missing or corrupted, we, uh, we end up with uh, missing or corrupted files. Now that we've imported both the x64 and the x86, we are able to be in the boot disk creator. We can confirm that they're both there. by opening it up to see that the checkbox is, is there for each of these. So we'll go ahead and cancel. Now we will make a new configuration and we'll just call this uh, 
Linton uh, automation. And it is important to select our version of P that'll be being used. And if we didn't have uh, PE installed, we can go ahead and select it here. Uh, or if we wanted instead to install a different version, we could, but I prefer to go to the import option as we did previously. It does take quite some time as it uh, opens the WIM and modifies it and then re-addresses uh, it. All right, here we go. Uh, we can also add drivers, but I would add drivers from the tools menu. I wouldn't uh, add them from here, uh, under tools, add drivers. The auto detect uh, should be good if we had more than one uh, driver INF, but for different versions of the network card, maybe we would want to go ahead and select one over the other, but auto detect seems to work fine for most cases. We do need to be, well, you don't have to, but a DHCP address would be desirable. If you are going to do a static IP, you will need to only use this big environment on one machine at a time because they'll have conflict in IPs if you boot to them with the same package. If you want to have several different static IP packages, you would then need to make several different packages. Make sure that the IP address of the server is correct, especially if you've had a change in name or change in IP. We we'll want to make sure that information is accurate. Remote uh, would be most ideal. That way we run the agent and such in Windows PE off of the map drive. That way no matter what version of PE, excuse me, no matter how old that way no matter what uh, update you go to for your hotfix or maintenance pack, you'll always be running the most recent version off of the server. We do need to then put in credentials. So these are credentials that will have access to the express share and any other map drives that you're setting up. So do make sure the credentials are correct because we do not validate them at this point. We double check that they're typed the same, but we don't validate that they're uh, accurate. So we will be entering a LM host entry for this IP address for this machine. I'll show you in a moment how we can add a second entry if we're trying to map more than one drive. It's not an uncommon use case where we would map the ghost share, which I would recommend that you leave as M drive. Anytime you're troubleshooting with support, we are going to be working from a base of M, mapping to the server in the express share. If you change the M drive to something else, it will cause much uh, difficulty when reading log files or discussing what is happening. If you want to add additional map drives, go ahead and do so. Just uh, make them larger than M and put the path that you would like to use. From here, you can see we have lots of different opportunities. Each one that we have mapped will be listed here. Because there's only one LM host entry here, if you can map your drive with the IP address, then you will be um, uh, in better shape by uh, not having to worry about uh, the host names and DNS and such. So we're going to be just having our single M drive, but you can map other drives. IP is preferred. I would only recommend that we add WinPE enhanced storage. This is going to help with some of your new uh, hardwares like uh, SSD, uh, although not all SSDs. But anyway, it's a small uh, addition, and I would recommend it, especially for the newer tablet machines. Here we have our uh, basically uh, summary screen. Double check that we've got the right. Uh, things happening here. This OEM extensions, this is one that is important if you're using standard tools. Because we are going to be connecting to the console, all of the files that are necessary will be loaded from the uh, M drive. So that uh, is not important, but if we were standard tools and we forget uh, to include an OEM extension, then you'll have a great boot disk, but it won't have any ghost files on it. So do include OEM extensions if you're using standard tools. Again, because we are on console, none is good here. We are going to be using um, DHCP, we are going to be mapping the drive, 
can see here we've got our name of the server and express the IP address of the server that we're going to be joining our session once we have it uh, established and booted up. Go ahead and finish. moment then it will be listed as a configuration and we will go in and edit the configuration and I'll show you how to add an additional uh, LM host entry. All right, takes a little while to load, but then here is our name of the package that we created. And we can see a couple of different things, but specifically I want to show the LM host entry here. If we go to the bottom, then we have our server. If we were going to want to add a additional uh, server name for mapping a drive, then whatever, server name. So IP, and then we would click away, and it'll ask if we want to save the changes or not. Because I'm just making them up here, I'm not going to save the changes. If we wanted to have a standalone installer that we could take with us, or script out, or deploy through some other mechanism other than using Ghost, we can go ahead and create the automation folder installer here. The operating system, most of these are going to be default. Some of them are a bit dated. Uh, so the GUI hasn't been updated, but uh, for a while, not in all places at least. The two changes that we need to be looking for is the boot processor style of the environment and also of the actual processor. And we do want to be doing automation boot if we want it talking back to the server. If we just did network boot, it'll map a drive, but it's not going to necessarily communicate to the server. If we did standalone, it's not necessarily going to even try to map the drives. So leave it by default if we're trying to make an automation disk. And then it's going to go through here and uh, build one of these uh, x86 installers. And we will allow it to go. It does take quite some time here. In this screen we can see where the file is saved at. It's important to keep track of that for later use. Once we have the install finished and close out of BootWiz, we can go to the folder where it's located at then. By default it's going to be in the Express Share and the deployment server under the BootWorks packages and the version of PE that we have and the architecture for the CPU. Here we are with our Win10 automation for scripting the deployment. We can use this. Uh, it will be silent because those were the options that we selected in our uh, package when we built it. From the console, I don't actually have any clients right at the moment. So if we did have a client though, we could right click and under advanced, we would have the option to install an automation folder. So we'll come back and do that later. We have some clients in here. One thing we do have is a dynamic machine group. So any machine that matches the filter of no automation folder installed will automatically be here. So if we are working on deploying this out to multiple machines, and we're trying to keep track of which ones have it and which ones don't have it, we can come in here and do our advanced and install automation folder. Of course, there aren't any in here, but if we did, it would install. And later on, as we were deploying new clients, they would eventually populate here, and we could come back and catch however many were necessary. Now we will talk about adding this to the Pixie package. So under the Pixie configuration tool, We will create a new package. Now we do have some options here on our server. We've not yet installed iPixie, but iPixie is a new feature to 3.3. We'll have a video on that later. But we would, if we wanted this Pixie package to be iPixie compatible, we would need to prepare it to support iPixie. We're not going to do that with this one. I'm going to have one that is and one that isn't, and we'll do that later. Now we want to be WinPE just because that'll be better hardware support. I am going to uh, keep with both uh, x86 and 64 available. If we didn't uh, have a PE package imported yet, if we were not, if this was the first time we were coming to the PE, we could then add pre-boot here and it would bring up the BootWiz and our PE packages because we've already imported them. We can see them here, but in case you were coming to this just for the Pixie section, we could then select and browse to the Windows Kits folder and import those. So we will save that. We are going to use the boot disk creator to 
build this. I have some older options direct from floppy and user supply that are not going to be being used. They haven't been removed from the GUI yet. We can have a free text section here with as much information as we wanted. Just like in the boot disk creator, we have the ability to modify the drivers included in this package. We are going to use DHCP. If we're using Pixie, that is a requirement to have DHCP in the environment, so we probably have a DHCP package that we would want to be using here. Again, make sure that your server is set correct, and ideally we would be running the agent remotely from the network share. We do need to then provide credentials here. We talked about in the standalone boot disk creator, we can add additional uh, shares here. We're just going to keep with the stock express share. We're also going to have the LM host entry. We only get to make one from here. It's going to point to the ghost server. You can add that later and add additional servers as necessary. Just like in the automation folder in the standalone boot disk creator, we want to add the enhanced storage package. None of the other ones we necessarily need to add. Well, you can lock the keyboard. That might be one where you don't want the end users to be able to touch the keyboard. And our summary screen. Next. And here we have our package. Again, if we needed to add additional items to the LM host file, we can go in here, go to the bottom. The format is IP, then server name. We are not going to do that, so we'll go ahead and next. And then we'll wait for it to build the x86 and the 64 files. Once the packages are built, it'll tell us which ones have been built, and uh, we can finish. As the Pixie server actually completes the process, it'll take some time. We'll be op have the opportunity to hit OK here and save on the next screen. And then I'll show you how we can look at the progress of the actual server making its way to completion. Once we return to the shared configuration page here, or the Pixie configuration utility, we can then go to status and we can expand on the GSS server and see the status of the various server states. In this case, we are going to hit save and then we will see that the Go server is going to then process this update and we'll wait for all of these to return back to green and then we're able to test Pixie booting. Now that we've got our Pixie server ready, we're ready to Pixie boot a system and test it out. Thank you for watching this video series. We'll go over Pixie booting and client access in a later video.